VMAC, Michigan State is going to play Ohio State in two weeks. And Ohio State today didn't look dominating against Nebraska. So now you have two one-loss teams. Certainly that game is going to have a ton of implications, not only for the Big Ten title and for the Codswell playoff. As it stands right yep. now, like Ohio State plays Purdue next week. So we're going to kind of see what the measuring stick is. If you go, I guess we're calling Purdue the measuring stick at this point. But I'm, <laughs> I'm a, you know me, I'm a little concerned about Ohio State. And I would say Ryan Day's probably a little concerned as well. Uh, I know they didn't have Garrett Wilson today, but that did not look like Buckeye football walking off the bus and scoring 40. It didn't look like Buckeye football, but I'm more concerned with the staff offensively, the play calling. I mean, we talked about CJ and, 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 and some of his woes. I mean, but at some point in time, why don't you try to run the football? The man threw, he had 54 passing attempts. 54. Like, listen, Henderson almost had 100 yards on 21 carries, 92 yards to be exact. Run the football. Run the football. Try to establish a balanced attack. It doesn't make any sense, especially on the road. And you can say whatever you want to say about Nebraska. One thing about Nebraska, they will make you bite all your fingernails off your fingers if you're rooting for the team they're playing against because that has been their storyline. They might not win a ball game, but boy, they're going to make you watch it all the way down to the wire and they will screw up your parlays if you're going against them in in, <laughs> in, 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 in a matchup like how we like what we saw today. That's just been their storyline before Iowa State. If you're talking about being one of the consider one of the best teams in college football, right? You got to find a way to dominate against the teams you're supposed to dominate. And we're not seeing this. And this and now next week, the measuring stick. Purdue. If you want to know who you are as a ball club, schedule Purdue and let's see what happens. Well, look, and, and Barrett, we shouldn't really be surprised here in terms of Purdue's success. They threw for 536 yards, Aiden McConnell. I mean, we knew Michigan State's pass defense wasn't good and it got absolutely exposed in this game and look Aiden McConnell threw the ball 54 times BMAC and so did CJ Stroud but guess what Purdue didn't run the football either and they still were able to win because they exposed Michigan State on this day uh, look Ohio State and Purdue this isn't a lock Barrett I, I mean this is this could be certainly this could Purdue again the spoiler makers could absolutely derail three Big Ten teams in Iowa Michigan State and Ohio State next week there's no doubt it's not a lock at all. I mean, we see what Purdue's able to do through the air with David Bell and that crew. So and we know what, what Ohio State, yeah, you know, C.J. Stroud kind of got off to a slow start this year, but really it's been the defense that at times has let them down and really hasn't improved that much from last year to this year despite a ton of experience. So, yeah, there's no doubt that, that Purdue is just a matchup nightmare. When you can do what they do with Jeff Rom getting into a play-calling rhythm and Bell and the rest of that crew going deep, it, it's almost it's one of the, they're one of those teams where you just don't want to catch them at the wrong time. And Iowa caught them at the wrong time. Michigan State caught them at the wrong time. And they're confident. And going up against an Ohio State defense that's been less than stellar, absolutely Ohio State should keep an eye out for them. They better. They better keep both eyes open because right now, if you're not careful, they're going to Purdue will dot one of those eyes and give you a raccoon eye, a little black ring around your eye and put you to sleep. But one thing about Ohio State in that matchup next week, it's going to be a big time matchup. A lot of people will be talking about this matchup because of what it means for the Big Ten. They play, they're playing at home, right? So that has to factor into your opinion about Ohio State just being able to win this ball game, right? But what I'm seeing from Ohio State over the last two weeks, gambling wise, they haven't been able to cover. And that's a concern because now we're starting to see things surface that are just about the reality of their game plan. Offensively, they're having issues. They're not flying around people and just sep creating separation. The pass catchers are not doing it. I mean, the big plays that we've seen over years, over, over weeks past, they had one today, but they're not consistently happening. So I think it's time for the staff to make some adjustments, get back to the drawing board and, and, and be creative and become the offense, get back to being the offense that we thought you would be, which is one of the more explosive offenses in college football. All right, so Michigan State out of the top four, Barrett. So Georgia wins big today as they handle business against Missouri. Alabama's taking on LSU tonight. Oregon has Washington. So if they all handle their business, obviously Oregon moves up a spot to third. Who are you putting in at fourth? Oklahoma, because they were off and they just kind of slide up. Or are you putting Ohio State at number four? Or neither? 
I'm going to put Oklahoma. I'm going to put Oklahoma at number four. And here's the, I think Oklahoma's getting disrespected. I don't know why they were all the way down there in the rankings last week. Because, look, every team's flawed, right? You go around college football, every team outside side of Athens, Georgia has flaws, has major issues. We saw Cincinnati almost throw the ball, uh, hand the ball, uh, a game away to Tulsa today. So Oklahoma has found a way to fix its flaws, or at least one of its flaws, right? Because Spencer Rattler was inconsistent. They put Caleb Williams in, and suddenly things start to get better. Now, their defense is not what we all thought it would be, and okay, that's fine. They're imperfect. All these teams are imperfect except Georgia, but Oklahoma has found a way to navigate through all of these, this minefield undefeated so far so they deserve to be in that number four spot i understand that it's the big 12 and it's oklahoma and they're incomplete and ohio state's the brand and all this other stuff give it to oklahoma they deserve it and if they don't get if they stop if they stumble they stumble who cares you can move it you do this every single week so the sooners deserve it and i, I certainly don't think ohio state uh, is out of this by any stretch of the imagination yeah, I agree, Barrett. I was so surprised to see Oklahoma, you know, not just not being in the top four, but where they were. Uh, you had a team who just lost in, Mich in the Michigan Wolverines ahead of Oklahoma. You had Cincinnati ahead of Oklahoma. So seeing what happens to Michigan State will provide an opportunity for another team. But Oklahoma should be higher. They should be higher. I know they have struggled uh, throughout the course of the year in games. They should be able to dominate. But we saw Ohio State struggle, to say the least. We saw what happened to Michigan State. So if Oklahoma not inside the top four right now being undefeated still, whew, it's going to be very, very difficult for Oklahoma to get a seat into the playoffs, <laughs> even if they take care of all their business. Because clearly the committee, they don't respect anything the Sooners are doing based on what we saw from the first playoff rankings that happened last week. New rankings, of course, come out every week. New rankings will be out on Tuesday. Of course, we'll break that down here on CBS Sports HQ. BMAC, Bear, great stuff as always. Uh, reacting to another busy day in college football. Already week 10 of the season. And hey, check out BMAC on his podcast, All Things Covered, with former LSU star and Vikings corner Patrick Peterson. It's entertaining. It's engaging. All Things Covered. Download and follow today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.